here at the Musician's Notepad, we were shocked and saddened to hear uh, just a few weeks ago of the passing of Vinnie Paul. And so for this group of the month, uh, we decided we would bring in uh, our our resident metal guy, Stephen Yergovic. This is me. It's you. It's <laughs> me. Again. And we'd like to just talk a little bit about, you know, why Vinnie Paul is important and why this has made such waves in the, in the drumming community. So, Steve, why... Why was Vinnie Paul so important? Well, obviously, we all know the band Pantera. Mm -hmm. I mean, self-explanatory. But uh, not only was he an iconic drummer because of that, I mean, he had lots of grooves in technique and metal, especially in their type of metal that they mm -hmm. were making that you didn't normally see from other people. And he did a bunch of cool, innovative double bass stuff that in the early 90s, you know, late 80s, you didn't really see much of that. And, uh, just songs like Primal Concrete Sledge, where he has that mm -hmm. running up, that skipping double bass running underneath, or the mm -hmm. patterns, he, the tom patterns he puts over top of uh, uh, the main groove. It's just you know, different ideas than you were seeing from a lot of drummers at the time. They were more straightforward. From like you know, Megadeth or Metallica, it, they were going more mainstream and had more simplified drumming as they got on. Mm -hmm. Versus he was Vinny was always kind of he always kept it kind of simple, but there was just moments where like the you know, he came out with just cool ideas, he could, uh, cool grooves that are tough to play. I guess I don't know the best way to word it, but... Uh, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Uh, he grooved under metal, and you don't think of metal as a groove type of music a lot of times. No, yeah, it's more like straightforward, 4-4, four, four, chunky, punch you in the face kind of stuff. <laughs> right. You know, just, uh, even him playing something just straightforward, like on Walk, or uh, even just Cowboys from Hell, the way he, mm -hmm. it, the flow it had, it just right. gave it a yeah. groove. Him, well, him and his brother, obviously, mm -hmm. the two just together made like that perfect so combo. Tight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For me, and for a lot of people, Vulgar Display was a was a huge watershed moment in metal. Just listening to the album, like when I first listened, it was probably in the mid two thousands. It was like a punch in the face again. You mm -hmm. were like, whoa, this hit mm -hmm. different. Just the the deep growls and the the tone, the dark tone, and the, mm -hmm. just the power that they had on that album. The beginning of Rise, just mm -hmm. the way it just punches you like you can't even believe. Just uh, so, while it may, I guess I did, I missed the initial yeah. shock wave of it, but even listening uh, to it later, when there's been heavy, heavy ass mm -hmm. bands out there now, yeah. it was still like whoa. Yeah, this and is, that's really good to hear that it still has that effect because I, I do remember. I'm old enough to, to remember that um, when that album came out and. There's a lot of albums that are at the very least trying to sound like that record. You can sit yeah. there and go, you know, if you didn't know and you weren't paying attention to, to how heavy that album in particular is, you would hear, you know, something that sounds like a modern metal record. And that was the first record that sounded like that. Like that record came out and it was like, yeah. oh, this is this is heavy. Um, it, and it was a slight. It, it sounded like Cowboys from Hell, but it was a it was a darker turn. They got rid of that high pitched vocal yeah. screams, which I, I like. I like, <laughs> I like the screaming. Um, but yeah, they took that away and just went mm -hmm. deep growls, and you just you can feel the anger behind it for no. sure. This guy from Anthrax, he uh, he said, you know, vulgar display took heavy and made it heavier, took angry and made it angrier, and took metal and made it more metal. Like, oh, absolutely. And it was just I mean, like, just, yeah. <laughs> it just brought, I would even say the, the album after that, I feel like they went even a little bit darker. For, for Far Beyond Driven? Oh yeah, yeah there's yeah. like, it's an even darker tone. They mm -hmm. got tighter, crisper sounds, tighter, yeah. they play together a bit tighter mm -hmm. on that. And just, you could feel a little bit better writing. Like you, obviously mm -hmm. they, people get better when they do things more. Right. <laughs> um, so yeah, and it's just that, I feel like that's their like seminal album. Uh, mm -hmm. Just five minutes alone is like just so simple, but just it grooves and then there's just mm -hmm. parts like in the middle where it just brings it down to that simple dun, 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 dun. Mm -hmm. It just, what a groove, but it's like, oh my God, mm -hmm. the tone. You know what we can't forget? The quarters <laughs> oh, or the half dollars. Right, yeah, yeah. That's what he brought distinguishable double bass. I, I mean, no one else was doing that before right. him. You didn't have that click to your uh, Cowboys from Hell and all the albums after that, mm -hmm. that clicky bass drum sound because he put half dollars on his mm -hmm. bass drum. And obviously that started a specific sound that now you have that click on your bass drum to give right. it that distinguishing punch. Right. And just, I mean, I guess the reason that it's innovative is that it 
gives the the kick a little bit of attack that yeah. cleans it up. You can hear the individual hits. Exactly. So double bass becomes something less of woof 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 and becomes da 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 da. Especially you know? when he's doing uh, some of those like cool patterns, like I'm becoming, mm -hmm. uh, or really like right at the end of that song, where it's just mm -hmm. you can like with without that click there, it might just turn into a more of a muddled mess in the right. recording. So. And then, you know, I'm pretty sure everyone puts a, that high-end click on their bass drum now for mm -hmm. pretty much most metal tracks. For the group of the month this month, we chose, well, which tune did you choose? Because we let you choose it. Uh, I chose Regular People. Okay. Well, Regular People by uh, Pantera from Vulgar Display. Obviously, mm -hmm. we had to go with something from Vulgar Display. You didn't want to choose the most obvious tracks. <laughs> I figure this one's got a good mix of groups, gro uh, groups, groups. grooves, double bass, uh, just some cool fills, and it's just some fun ideas, and it's just a... Uh, Overall solid Pantera track. It kind of shows you what Pantera's about, but also shows you what Vinnie Paul can do. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So make sure to listen to the whole thing. Um, because of the way that we've been structuring Group of the Month, we're just going to take the uh, the kind of running double bass section. But I think something that's you know notable to say about Vinnie Paul as well is that uh, he doesn't generally stick with one groove through the entire thing or um, you know one groove per section. Yeah. You know, it's not like the chorus is always the same thing or the verse is always the same thing. I mean, sometimes that happens, but the idea is like. There's a lot of evolution going on through the parts as he goes. They're actually, yeah, actually, in uh, it reminds me of Far Behind Driven. Sometimes it's subtle, but uh, I can't remember the song. But he, it just goes. He brings something from a, what was like a quarter or half time, and then plays mm -hmm. it just in standard or half time. Mm -hmm. Just moves it up a slight right. speed for the different mm -hmm. verse. But it makes a difference, and you notice it. It's so slight, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's so each time the the chorus comes through, it's like slightly. He's doing something just slightly different each time, and it, take it away. Okay. All right. This is the main chorus of Regular People, though there are many cool grooves throughout this song. This is a four measure groove with running 16th note double bass throughout. The ride cymbal plays eighth notes on the bell and there are snares on two, four, as well as the three E. In the fourth measure, we go to a pseudo double time and then straight feel by placing snare drums instead on the one and, two and, three and, for four and. We also play crash cymbal instead of the ride bell on those hits. What would you choose for a group of the month? Leave a comment below or send us a tweet at Musicians Notes with hashtag GOTM. As always, you can play along with the previous groups of the month with our Spotify playlist linked in the description below. We are also doing a special uh, Pantera, sorry, a special Vinnie Paul Pantera Damage Plan Hell Yeah uh, playlist um, uh, curated by Steve. I'll um, put it together. Yeah. You can you can also uh, follow Steve at uh, his YouTube channel, um, Good Enough at Drums. We'll put that link in the description below as well uh and yeah make sure to like comment subscribe all that stuff let's hit it